So today we're going to talk about um, some preparation for workplace and apprenticeship math 10, or WAM 10. Um, we're going to focus on measurement today, uh, and I want to talk about two things in measurement. We're going to go through two different problems, and I'm going to give you a couple things to think about when you're given some tricky questions on the exam. So first I have a practice question. Uh, just in case you can't read it. A wrestler leaves his belt on a smackdown landing pad. Here's the belt. Here's the landing pad. How much free space is there to superplex an opponent? So there's some, like, wrestler, say, and he wants to, like, land somewhere on the pad. The belt is covering part of it because he left his belt on the landing pad, and he wants to land somewhere else, not on the belt, because that would hurt. Um, so the question asks, how much free space is there to superplex an opponent, or how much space around the belt, so this kind of area around here, how much space is there to land in? Um, now, there's a couple different ways to do it, but this kind of question comes up on just about every provincial exam I've seen for WAM 10, and the best way to tackle it is figure out the object that's in the way, and then take the entire square or rectangle and subtract out the one object that's in there. So, uh, just because the question's kind of fun and you can see what the question's asking just by looking at the diagram, I'm actually going to erase the question so I have some more room to work with. Okay, step number one. Let's figure out the size of this big old landing pad here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, by one, two, three, four, five squares. In order to find the area, we do length times width. Sorry, that five was a little off. So we have 35 as our total area for our landing pad. Now what we want is we want to figure out how much room the belt is taking up. And this is where it gets a little tricky. Well, it doesn't take up an exact amount of space. It kind of like covers part of this block and, and just a little bit of that one, but it covers like all of, all, well, all of that block, but like three quarters of that one. It's just like, how do we figure out? I mean, it's hard to tell. We just don't know. So, so here's what we do. This is actually two steps, and they're nice and easy to follow. Step number one is count what you know. There are several things that you know when you look at a diagram like this, and the first thing you need to do is just is count what you know. So let's do that first. Well, this entire block here, I'm just going to cross it out because that's taken off. This will be, um, we'll call this belt. So we have one square taken up. Um, that one looks like it's almost taken up. There's a little corner off, but we're just sort of doing the best we can. We know it's just about taken up. We're going to cross that guy out. One plus one more square. Okay, now, we've crossed out two squares, but there's several squares left. There's one, two, three, four, five, maybe six, and maybe seven squares left that have partial bits of the belt in it, but we don't really know how much. So with those seven squares, what we do is we do something that I like to call guesstimation station. This is just a fun term. <laughs> well, fun, math, you know. Um, it's just a fun term that means we're going to guess what we kind of can and as best we can. And if we don't quite get it right, that's okay, because we've already counted what we know. That's kind of the neat thing about these questions on the exam. They give you ranges. Like, usually they'll post a question, they'll give you a multiple choice answer, A, B, C, or D, and they give you a range. Is it between 1 and 10? Is it between 15 and 25? And the reason they give you a range is because people use the guesstimation station step differently and everyone falls somewhere within the range. But by counting what you know, you'll probably hit 
the lower end of the range, and guesstimation station will bring you up to what you need to get into for the actual part of the range. Okay, so instead of using those big words, let me, let me just show you. All right, we have one square plus one square so far. I've X'd out the squares that I've used. Well, that looks like about half a square. That one's not quite half a square. That's about a quarter, and that's about a quarter. So we have quarter square plus a quarter square plus a half square. That's half square, quarter square, quarter square. Now again, guesstimation station. It's not exactly perfect, but it's pretty close. Now the reason I counted a quarter, a quarter, and a half is because they all equal one. So I'm just going to erase it to make it easy, and I'm going to put one. The reason that I know that is because a quarter plus a quarter equals a half. And a half plus a half equals one. So there we are. So what do we have left? We have about four blocks left. We're going to deal with that guy, that guy, this guy, and maybe that little bit right there. Okay, so you know what? Mm, this is, this is kind of tricky. But here's what I'll say. This one's about a quarter. He's taking up just that little corner up there. This one's about a half. We have about a quarter there and a half there. Hmm. This one, you know what, it's not quite a quarter, but we're going to bump it up just to make it easier. So that's another quarter. Plus a quarter. The other quarter is this guy. Plus a half. And again, a quarter plus a quarter plus a half equals one. That was my half. Okay. Now we're left with just one. One more. That takes out, well, more than half, less than a whole. Mm, do I want to round up, round down? Think about it a little bit, then just decide. Don't spend too long on it. Just make a decision quickly. We are in guesstimation station. It does not have to be perfect. I'm just going to call it a whole. Why not? That's one, two, three, four, five in total. The belt takes up five units of space. The total area of the landing pad is 35 units. The original question asked, how much free space is there? Well, if you want to calculate the free space, we've got to take out the belt. In order to take out the belt, we're going to subtract total area minus the belt. Total area, 35 units. Belt, 5 units. Final answer, 30 units. Not so bad, eh? It looks daunting and it looks scary. Notice that I crossed out boxes as I dealt with them. That's a technique that I use. You can try that one too. Or if you're um, visually able to cross it out in your mind, do that. I'm not. Um, and just remember, counting what you know and the guesstimation station are the best two steps to make sure you fall somewhere within the range and you get a good approximation of an answer. That's all these questions are looking for, are approximations. They look daunting and scary, but it's really your best guess. Okay, I have one more thing to show you. And that's conversions. Conversions, again, appear on every single provincial. I think they always will for, till the end of time, or until provincial exams stop being a thing, which is like about a decade away. Um, but here's what I want to do. I want to convert something like feet to yards. So let's say I have a wrestling ring. Just say. And my wrestling ring is 60 feet, but some weird person, I don't know, some guy, when he was helping me measure my wrestling ring, he decided he figured it would be 60 feet wide, but then he was like, oh yeah, and it's only 10 yards in width. And I was all like, dude. Why would you give me feet and yards? That's so impractical. And he's like, dude, look, I don't know. 
So anyway, um, what I have to do is I have to convert them all to one unit. I have to convert them all to feet, or I have to convert them all to yards. Usually the question will give you something. It'll say, you know, show the final unit in yards, convert this to inches. Um, so I'll do that here. I'll say we want to end up in feet. Now, this question is actually not so, so bad. All I want to know is how long is it from here to here in feet? We know that it's 10 yards, but what is that in feet? Well, if we go to our conversion table, or if we have it memorized, which by the exam you pretty much will, um, you know that there are exactly 3 feet per yard. Or 3 feet to 1 yard, or for every 1 yard there exists 3 feet, or whatever math people say, I don't really know. But anyway, if we have 1 yard, that means there's 3 feet. Now, so this is the big question. Everyone knows for conversions, you either multiply or you divide. Which one do I do? I want to turn it to feet, so do I multiply by 3 to get feet? Or do I divide by, divide by 3 to get feet? Divide this number, 10. Do I multiply by 3, or do I divide by 3? Hmm. Well, I'll give you one real easy rule to follow. Here it is. If we want to make this number, the number that we're looking for, bigger, then we multiply. We multiply every time. If we want to make that number smaller, then we divide. Now you might be wondering, how do I know whether I want to make it bigger or smaller? Well, I have 10 yards here. Is When I change it to feet, is it going to get bigger or is it going to get smaller? We have to use our intuition. That's just our gut feeling. We have to use our gut feeling to decide whether this number needs to get bigger or smaller. Well, if there's one yard, there's three feet, so it's definitely going to be bigger. It's got to be bigger. If, if, if we divide it by three, we'd have a very small number of feet, and that wouldn't really make any sense. It has to get bigger, because every one yard equals three feet. If there's one yard, there's, there's three feet. So it's got to get bigger, so we multiply. We multiply by three. So ten yards multiplied by 3 equals 30. 30 feet. So this question was a rather simple, very basic idea of a conversion. But the thing that I want you to take away is this rule right here. You can memorize how to convert things. You can be very good at analyzing diagrams. But unless you know in the end, and this is the one that most people get stuck on, whether you multiply or divide to get your answer, all the other work isn't really relevant because you can end up just dividing when you were supposed to multiply and you'll get the wrong answer. So just remember, we need, if we want it to be bigger, if we know in our gut that the answer we're looking for is going to be bigger than our current answer, we multiply. If we know in our gut that the answer we're looking for is going to be smaller, then we divide. And that is measurement for today.